Homeroom committee members have a meeting today after school. Gather in the auditorium. That's all. Stand up. Dismissed. Oh, I better send a text to Yo to let him know. I forgot she was in the homeroom committee. I wonder what that meeting's all about. Well, it's almost that time again, right? It's gotta be the sports festival. I know. I know. We have to read this volume, Dylan. I know. We Skype all the time. My manga is right next to my computer now. Why haven't we done this? I don't know, you ask me. Hey everyone, well, I'm so sorry. I've been gone from the Awesome Geeks for months. Moving and a bunch of other stuff has just, it's, ugh. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not here to discuss that because I don't want to discuss it. Yeah, it's not bad or anything, but I just don't want to discuss it. I want to get onto the topic of the week, and that topic is books that changed our lives. Now, my bookcase is just full of books because I've collected from a very young age. I love books, I love reading, and uh, there are a lot. So as I was watching Dylan's video, I was kind of thinking about what books I would want to discuss. I'm not going to pull any of them out, mainly because my books are still not organized and are not entirely, or are not entirely organized, and also because my carpal tunnel has been flaring up, so I don't want to aggravate it. But Anyway, the first book that I'm going to, or rather the first series that I'm going to talk about, probably the only series technically, is the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Now, when I was younger, I had no interest in Harry Potter whatsoever. No interest whatsoever, none. But then when I had a surgery on my leg, uh, I had to stretch it uh, every night as part of the recuperating process, and... Um, my mom decided to read Harry Potter to me as I was stretching my leg just so I'd have something to take my mind off of stretching. And she started reading The, the Sorcerer's Stone, of course, and I was entranced. I unexpectedly immediately fell in love to the point where as we were reading the book, I would steal the copy that we got from the library from her room and just read it in my room or go into her bed and read it in her bed and it, the rest of it's history. So honestly, my mom is the reason why I love Harry Potter so much. She's the reason why Harry Potter has been in my life for, for well over a decade. I love her for numerous reasons, but I also love her for the fact that she introduced me to Harry Potter. Harry Potter has impacted my life pretty much in every facet. Without Harry Potter, I wouldn't be the same person. I wouldn't have the same friends. I probably wouldn't be as geeky, if a geek at all, if it weren't for Harry Potter. Or maybe I would probably just mildly be a geek because of Pokemon as well, but still, Harry Potter is just a huge part of my life still to this day, and it's a huge part of my life so much so that I have ordered a paperback box set of the books as well, because even though I have a perfect hardcover box set that a wonderful family friend, or family friends rather, gifted me on Christmas f for no reason, for no reason whatsoever, they gifted me this beautiful... Harry Potter box set of hardcovers. Box set of Harry Potter hardcovers, rather, for Christmas. I have a set of those, but I want a set that I can carry around and read. Because when you get to Order of the Phoenix, the thing's a fridge. You can't carry around Order of the Phoenix. That's impossible. So I wanted a paperback set so I can freely carry them around without having, like, rocks in my bag. Although, Having rocks in your bag, Harry Potter rocks, you know, wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but carpal tunnel is a thing as well, so I don't want to aggravate my wrists from holding up beautiful books like Harry Potter. And as for other books that have changed my life, honestly, Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins changed my life so much, and you wouldn't think that a YA contemporary romance would change my life. But, 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 it did, because at the time of Anna and the French Kiss, it came out in like 2010, I believe, everyone in the booktube community was reading it, everyone was loving it. I was not expecting to love it. 
I was not. But I absolutely adore that series. I love Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Born Next Door and Isla and the Happily Ever After so much. And I love them even more than just basic loving them, if that makes any sense. I love them because they essentially blew open the door and said, you love why contemporary romance. You, 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 you're no longer indifferent to this. You love why contemporary romance so much. And you love writing it too. Uh, and I did. <laughs> I loved writing it. I haven't written for quite some time. And I really would like to get back to it. But I honestly owe Anna and the French Kiss my love of YA contemporary romance and my love of writing YA contemporary romance. And the next book that I'm going to talk about is Love is the Higher Law by David Levithan. I believe this is the first solo David Levithan book that I ever that I ever read. This book is very short. It's like 260 pages, maybe, maybe, maybe if that. And it tells um a story of 9-11. Now I'm a New Yorker. I love the city, but at the time of 9-11, I was, I believe, I was 10. I was in either fourth or fifth grade. They didn't, the school didn't really tell us much about 9-11 at all because we were young. And so I, all I really remember about 9-11 was I believe we had to go to my second teacher's classroom because in my, um, we call it intermediate school, they, our classes were split up into two teachers because one teacher taught like science and math, etc. And the other teacher taught like uh, social, and the other teacher taught things like English. And we had to go to uh, Mrs. Olson's room, who was my English teacher. And I just remember sitting around because her room was situated where there were tables in like sets of four. Um, so we would sit around the tables and then we went home. I believe we went home early. And when I got into my house, my mom and my sister were both home. And my mom looks at me and she goes, Melissa, something very bad happened today. And I look at her and I'm like, what happened? And she brings me into the living room and there's just the news reports of the attacks and I just remember seeing the footage replayed over and over and over again of fireballs in the Twin Towers and that's something that looking back on it now is in it's just surreal because that's a place so close to me and now it's just it's in my heart. New York City is a part of me. It's in my heart. Whenever I'm in Grand Central Terminal, whenever I get off the train to go meet friends, I immediately feel, okay, I'm, I'm at home. I'm in my second home. And at that time when I was young and 9-11 had happened, I didn't really understand what was going on. But now I do. Of course I do. And I remember not long after that, they needed volunteers and they needed people to go down and my dad um went down and he because he wanted to help he knew that people needed help so he went down and they told him that he couldn't get on the ferry to go into the city and so he just grabbed a case of water and just snuck on and he said that as he was walking around helping people, he didn't look down. He never looked down because he didn't know what he was walking on. And he didn't want to see what he was walking on either. And Love is the Higher Law just is a beautiful, heart-wrenching story about 9-11, about the attacks, and about how New York as a city came together, and how it affected New York City as a whole. And in the author's note, David Levithan has uh, written about how he was affected by 9-11 because he was living in New York City at the time. And he remembers how he couldn't go home because during 9-11 a portion of the city was blocked off. So if you lived in a portion of that city or if you had to pass the portion of that city to go home, you couldn't go home. 
So I don't know how I don't know how long people had to wait to go home, but that I had no idea about that part at all. And a lot of my friends are from different boroughs of the city, and my best friend Eric, he is five years older than me, so he remembers 9-11 more clearly than I do. And he told me about how all they did at school was sit and listen to what was going on or watch the broadcasts. They didn't do anything else for that day. And I honestly don't know what it's like to be in that situation. I don't know I've never felt that level of fear and uncertainty and I honestly pray that I never do because I, I just can't comprehend it. And because of that I would definitely recommend reading Love is the Higher Law. It is such a... it's an important book. It's very short. You can read it in a day. It is astonishing. And anyway, Kay, we will see you tomorrow. Bye.